Hello students, in today's lecture series, we will be beginning with electronic materials for semiconductor physics. Please subscribe to the channel before proceeding further. We will be discussing under electronic materials, pre-electron theory, Fermi level, density of states, periodic pro uh, potential, the Bloch's theorem and the krogan penny model, energy and K diagram, effective mass, origin of energy bands in solids and classification of the materials on the basis of energy bands, that is the metals, semiconductors and insulators. Let us begin. Electronic materials, as the old criteria goes that metals consist of a large number of free electrons because of which they are classified as metals. The insulators have less number of free electrons and the semiconductors lie midway. Now, in order to explain this theory of how electrical and thermal properties of metals are undergone, many scientists, among them the main one, Drude and Lawrence, proposed the free electron theory of metal. This theory is applicable for both metals and non-metals. Now, this theory was developed in three main stages, beginning with classical free electron theory, quantum free electron theory, and the zone theory. Maximum number of questions asked are where you are expected to explain the free electron theory, the advantages of the free electron theory, and the disadvantages of free electron theory. Maximum number of times the question that has come is discuss in detail the disadvantages of the free electron theory. Let let us begin. Classical, the first theory that was developed was uh, the classical free electron theory, which stated that metals contain free electrons, which are responsible for the electrical conductivity and metals are obeying the laws of classical mechanics. Then came the quantum free electron theory, which said that the free electrons are moving with a constant potential. This theory obeys quantum laws. Then the zone theory came up according to this free electrons are moving in a periodic potential that has been provided by the lattice. So this is also known as the band theory of solids. Now, the most common question, explain the classical free electron theory of metal, give its drawbacks, explain Drude Lorentz free electron theory, give the drawbacks. So you can see this is a very important question where in eight marks, you have to compile the free electron theory or maybe in five marks, discuss the drawbacks of the theory. Let us begin. This free electron theory, the very basic assumption for explaining this theory was that all metals contain fixed number of valence electrons forming an electron gas which is free to move throughout the volume of metal. The motion of electrons in the metal is random. The movement of these free electrons is obeying the laws of classical kinetic theory of gases. The electron velocities in metal are obeying the classical Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of velocities. Now, when an electric field will be applied, the free electrons are going to rush towards the positive terminal of the supply and the electrons are going to experience two random motions. One, due to temperature and drift motion due to the applied voltage. So the electrons are going to move in opposite direction. The average distance that has been covered by the electron between two collisions will be known as mean free path. And the time it takes to cover this distance is known as relaxation time. 
So what are the success and failure of this theory? The biggest advantage, see this theory has been used to explain the electrical conduction of metals. You can see the important question is success and failure of this theory, which you have to jot down. So the basic advantage is that this theory explains the electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity of metals very successfully. It verifies Ohm's law. It is used to explain the optical properties of metals. The valence electrons are freely moving about the whole volume of metals like the molecules of a perfect gas. So, and the uh, movement of free electrons is obeying the laws of classical theory of kinetic theory of gases. Now, the drawbacks of this theory are, this is a very important question. It is failing to explain the electric specific heat, the specific heat capacity of metals. It fails to explain the superconducting properties of metals. It fails to explain photoelectric effect, Compton effect, black body radiation, etc., fails to correct the mathematical expression for thermal conductivity. And lastly, and most important for your topic, classification of solids on the basis of band theory, that is metals, semiconductors and insulators cannot be done by this theory. So next came up the quantum free theory of electrons for explaining quantum free electron theory of metals. Now, this was explained by Sommerfeld, who modified the free electron model on the basis of quantum statistics. The assumptions for this are that metal is containing a large number of conduction electrons. Center is the nucleus. Here in the outer orbits are the electrons. So metals are having large number. At absolute zero, all energy levels up to Fermi level will be filled and all the higher level ones will be empty. That means up to one specific state they are filled. After that, they are empty. And the electron within the metal is being treated as totally free. Because of the light mass and dense packing, the electrons in metal are considered as a gas under high compression. And hence, to a degenerate gas. Also, the electron gas is charged. The free electron gas in a metal may be regarded as plasma. The electrons assume Pauli's exclusion principle and hence they obey the Fermi-Dirac statistics rather than the classical Boltzmann statistics. Thank you. In next lecture, we will continue with the Fermi-Dirac statistics details.